guys, it's your boy, Barca Boy 103. Today we're going to be doing the match analysis from the Super Cup final yesterday between Barcelona and Athletic Club. Hasn't even been 24 hours since the game, so my depression is still synced in, so bear with me in this video. So we're going to take a look at some of the individual performances from this game, take a look at some stats, take a look at the post-match press conference from Ronald Coleman and two other players, and also just talk a little bit about some transfer news. So before we get into it, make sure you guys smash that like button to try to get the 200 likes on this video. It'd be very much appreciated, and of course, hit the subscribe button, and let's get into it. Let's start off by talking about the team performance on the night. We're going to start off by looking at the starting lineup, which is on your screen right now. It is Ter Stegen in goal, Des Arajolangla, Jordi Alba, Frank Dion Busquets, Pedri, Messi, Griezmann, and Usman Dembele. Now, after rewatching the game, I have to say the performance on the night wasn't convincing. I don't understand why, because I back Coleman in the fact that he put out the right lineup. I think this was our best lineup on the paper. It was the Gala 11. He went with it. Have no complaints. He played the 4-3-3. I felt like the performance was very, very, very tiring. You could see players were just trying to go through the motions. And you can see that in the stats. Of course, Barcelona dominating the ball possession with 67%. But look at the shots. 10. We had 10 shots this whole game. Athletic Club had more shots in this game than we did by two. But the positive thing is that we had four shots on target and we scored two, which is good, which is a 50% ratio, which is, you know, better than we usually do. But I felt like we didn't really test the goalkeeper in this game because as you can see, you can see that the shots inside the box were seven, the shots from outside the box were three, and the keeper only had to make one save. So out of the 10 shots that we had, keeper only had the same one, which shows that some of them were on target and the ones that were on target went in. Some of them were just, you know, skied wide. So I felt like in that sense, we weren't really pressuring Athletic Club in that sort of, you know, area. Of course, the possession, passing, all that sort of stuff, we were dominating. And of course, Barcelona had seven shots on, in the box on that night. And if you look at Athletic Club, they had 10. So they were really trying to get into our box, and they did, and they finished their chances. Barcelona were a big lackluster in that sense. You know, Messi skied wide. Griezmann obviously missed that one big chance on the volley in extra time. So I felt like when Barcelona were under the pressure, under the cards, we didn't, you know, really come up, except for when Griezmann scored the wake at 2-1. Other than that, it was a very, very, you know, lackluster performance, and I felt like everyone in the team was pretty much average on the night. Let's get in now to the post-match press conference from Coleman and two other players. The two other players were Jordi Alba and Antoine Griezmann. Before I get into these quotes, I want to make it clear to you guys that, of course, we just suffered a big defeat, so they didn't really want to talk that much, so some of the quotes are really, really shortened down, and it's looked like they only talked for, like, 10 seconds when they probably talked for, like, a minute. But just want to make that clear. Of course, you're disappointed. You don't really want to talk to me. You just want to go home and, you know, take it on the chin. So take that into consideration. So let's get it and see what they had to say. Let's start off with Jordi Alba. Of course, Jordi Alba had a very, very mixed performance to say the least. Of course, defensively, he cost us two out of three athletic club goals, which weren't great. But of course, offensively, he did get us two goals. So you have a bit of a mixed performance on Jordi Alba. Let's get it and see what he had to say. Starts so by saying that in the 88th minute, a stupid foul has penalized us a lot. The team was very excited to win this cup. Also goes on to say that, look, the referee in this game was clearly on Athletic Cup's side. He said that the performance from Barcelona wasn't that great, but it was enough to get the job done. And he felt that those referee decisions, the 50-50s, really cost us this game. Now let's get into Antoine Griezmann. Of course, he was the man of the match in this game overall, not just for Barcelona. Had a fantastic game, especially down on that left-hand side. Like I said before, do not play him at striker. Playing on the left-hand side, he was brilliant. Let's get in and see what he had to say. So the interviewer asked him, how do you feel? He said, annoyed and angry. He continues on by saying that we made serious mistakes in strategy. We haven't communicated well. Someone has to shout during these actions. We don't communicate. We have to work on it. Griezmann is right. The team does just not communicate on the pitch. We saw yesterday in extra time how Athletic Club were coming together and talking and Barcelona were already on the pitch ready to go. The problem is for me that when Barcelona are at a very, very low point in the game, no one wants to step up and talk. And Griezmann's right. I don't know if Messi's not talking. I don't know if they're staying I don't know PK. I don't know. Maybe because PK's not there, no one's talking. Busquets. Whoever the captains are, whoever the leaders in this pitch, they do not talk, they do not communicate, not encourage people when we're down. Especially in the fact when the tactics are not working, no one wants to say anything, no one wants to talk. This is one of the main problems at Barcelona. Finally, let's get into Ronald Coleman and see what he had to say. Of course, he is the manager and his opinion matters the most because he sets out the team and he sets out the lineup. Let's see what he had to say. Starts by saying that it was a very contested game. In the second half, we improved our game. In the first half, we lost balls and we couldn't reach their area. We put ourselves ahead on two occasions, but they scored twice to level the score. We are disappointed and sad, but we don't have much time to regret it today. I saw things that I like, but there are things that I have to improve on as well. It was hard to lose today. He continues on by saying that Messi knows when he is fit to play and when he's not. He said that he could play. He did his best. I don't think it's a step backwards. Winning would have been better, obviously, but we will show that we are on the right track in our next games. We need time. For many of the players that played in this final, it served them to gain experience. Then he was asked about the refereeing decisions in this game. He said, I prefer not to talk about the referees because as we all know, I've already voiced my opinion multiple amount of times and just want to say it again. Now I want to highlight some of the individual performances on the night. We're going to start off with Antoine Griezmann, 8.7 rating from SofaScore, 
absolutely brilliant on the night. You can see his heat map. He was all over the pitch, but of course, predominantly down that left hand and the middle hand side. He played 120 minutes and got two goals. He had three shots on target, one off target, which was that volley and extra time that we really needed to go in. I took the two dribbles and completed two. And of course, he had that one big chance miss, which of course was the one in extra time. 79 touches, 85% accurate pass, four long balls, four successfully won. Ground duel attempted 7 1 4, aerial duels he won 1 out of 1. He made two interceptions, he made one tackle. I think this was an excellent performance of Antoine Griezmann. I think if he just stays on that left hand side, he will have a good end of the season. And I believe that if he can just keep up this momentum, keep up his performances, he may even stay when the new president comes in. After this match now, Antoine Griezmann has now been directly involved in six goals in his last four appearances for Barcelona in all competition, three goals, three assists, after failing to score or assist a goal in any of his previous seven matches. So the main thing about Griezmann is that he is improving. Of course, when he's playing at striker at the beginning of the season, wasn't doing that great, got moved to camp, did well. After he got moved out of camp, he couldn't really, you know, find his feet. Was moved to the left wing and had that left wing center forward kind of role, and he's flying. He is doing brilliant. Also now, Antoine Griezmann has scored five goals in his last four finals in all competition. He got two against Atletico Marseille in the Europa League, one in the World Cup final, and two yesterday. He has been superb in finals. Hopefully, he'll have more finals with Barcelona to come so he can put in those good performances. But overall on the night, he was fantastic. Now, I quickly want to look at some of the other players' performances on the night. I want to start off with Jordi Alba. And the reason why I want to start off with Jordi Alba is, that, of course, he's getting a lot of backlash from this game. Rightfully so. He literally costs this game in his defensive mistakes. Of course, played 120 minutes, got one assist, had a clearance, made a tackle, won two ground duels out of two, had nearly 150 touches of the ball, had four key passes. Now, the problem with me is that he attempted seven crosses on the night and only had one that was accurate. That is very poor from Jordi Alba. More of those need to be accurate for sure. He attempted five long balls and completed three, and he obviously created two big chances, which were the two goals for Antoine Griezmann. Of course, defensively, he was all over the pitch, and Barcelona are really, really in desperate need of searching for a new left back. I think Jordi Alba at the top level is done, just like Luis Suarez was, just like Rakitic was, just like all those other players were, Arturo Vidal. Jordi Alba at the highest level is finished. I think if Jordi Alba would accept a backup role to another left back, I would keep him. I think he's good in that sense. Of course, you have to take a wage to cut and all that sort of stuff. But I don't think he would. I think he wants to be the predominantly the starting left back. But for me, we have to move on. Quick, we want to talk about Lionel Messi's performance. Of course, he got a 7.3 rating from Sofa Score. You can see his heat map very, very predominantly in the center forward false nine position. Played 121 minutes. The main issue with me is that it looked like Messi was the end of 2020 Messi. He had zero shots on target and two shots off target. So today, he was not clinical in that sense. I feel like he wasn't getting enough chances, obviously, because the team wasn't really creating that much. But when he got those opportunities, he really didn't do anything with them. Of course, he attempted six dribbles and completed four. 85% pass accuracy. He attempted four crosses on the night and completed none. Attempted three long balls and completed two. He attempted 19 ground duels and only won 12. And of course, another main stat is that he lost the ball 21 times. And of course, that the frustration came out for that red card. Speaking of Leo, of course, he got his first red card for Barcelona yesterday. I still I still can't believe it, to be honest. I never thought I'd see the day Messi getting a red card for Barcelona. Anyways, you might be wondering how many games he's going to get banned for. Well, we have some good news on that. The referee hasn't mentioned aggressiveness in his report. Messi may be suspended for two matches, which is, of course, Cornelia and Elche. The final decision will be made by the competition community. If there's no aggression in there, he'll miss two games. If there is, he could miss four. If Messi were to miss four games, of course, he'd miss the Cornelia match, the Elche, Athletic Club at home, and Real Betis away, which are going to be massive games. He'll be back for Alaves at home, and then straight after that, it is PSG in the Champions League. For me, I am hoping to God that Messi only gets a two-game ban. That way, he can come and help us against Athletic Club at home, which will be very, very difficult. Real Betis away, which has always been very, very difficult. Alves at home, which shouldn't be a problem. And then, of course, the Champions League. So Messi, for me, two-game ban would be you no know, fair injustice. But I think a four-game ban would really, really hurt us in those important games in La Liga. And then coming back into the Champions League, straight back in, not really played in a while, too. So I do think it's going to be very, very difficult. And finally, on Lionel Messi, Mundo Batiba last night came out with a picture comparing Messi leaving the pitch after the red card to Zidane when he got the red card in the World Cup. For me, I do see Messi closer to leaving Barcelona than staying at the moment. Hopefully, that can change. But right now, in my opinion, it isn't looking too good for Messi at Barcelona. Now quickly I want to mention two unsung heroes from this game. I think there were two players in this game that really put in a shift but didn't get the recognition they deserved. Firstly, Frankie de Jong got a 7.8 rating from Silver Score. You can see his heat map predominantly on the right hand side of that midfield but was all over the pitch. Played 120 minutes, 120 touches, 94% accurate passes. Attempted two long balls and he completed both of them. He attempted six dribbles on the night and completed both of them which is absolutely ridiculous. An interesting stat for me was that he got fouled five times, which shows how strong he is in that midfield when he brings that ball up for that counterattack, although athletic club players were taking him out. He was superb on the night. 
The other player was, of course, Ronald Araujo. He, for me, was absolutely fantastic. I don't know why SofaScore gave him a 6.5 rating. I thought that was ridiculous. Of course, you can see his heat map on the screen, which, of course, he was playing the right center back role. He, for me, was absolutely superb. I'm so excited to see him and PK pair up together because, of course, now Araujo has more, you know, game time. He's had more experience, and he's been playing absolutely fantastically well. Him along PK will be the partnership going forward, I think. Now, just before we end off this video, I want to quickly touch upon some of the transfer news surrounding Barcelona. First one's coming in from Mundo Deportivo saying that Mateus Fernandez does not enter Ronald Coleman's plan and is a firm candidate to go out in the winter market. Deportivo Alves are innocent and alone. Coleman wants him to have minutes on loan. For me, of course, this is something we should be looking at. Of course, Fernandez has only had 10 minutes of game time this whole season. For me, a low move is the right option, but of course the problem is that there's not that many clubs interested, but Deportivo Alves have shown some interest. For me, sitting on loan for the rest of the season is the right move to do. This next one is coming in from the Mirror from the UK, saying that Gini Wijnaldum will not renew his current contract at Liverpool and will join Barcelona on the free this summer. For me, this is only a possibility if Coleman stays as our manager. If he gets sacked, I don't see this happening, but if he stays for the next season, this is definitely on the cards. Of course, Coleman has been asking for Wijnaldum since he's been hired, for me, we just have to wait now for Spanish reports. Of course, it's coming in from the UK, from the Mirror, who are, you know, kind of iffy. Sometimes they're reliable, sometimes they're not. So we have to wait for Spanish reports because nothing in Spain have been rumoring this. But it's definitely possible that Gino Wijnaldum could be joining Barcelona. So that was my match preview for Barcelona versus Athletic Cup in the Spanish Super Cup final. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you leave a like. Let me know your comments down below on everything we discussed or if you want to bring up a point that I didn't mention. And make sure you guys hit that subscribe button. Of course, yesterday was a very difficult defeat to take, although it is a Spanish Super Cup final, which doesn't really matter. It is at least of our expectations. I think it was the matter in the way that we lost it. Of course, there was a lot of hype that we were going to win it. We were the favorites. The players really wanted it, and they ended up not performing. That's the part that hurts the most for me, in my opinion. Hopefully, we can move on from this and finish the season very strong. So I'll see you guys next time on the channel. Take care, and Forza Borsa.